Johnny Lee, Jeff Alexander, his orchestra, and radio's all-time favorite, Famous and Andy. Brought to you by Lever Brothers Company, makers of new 1950 Rinso with Solium. The soap that gets your clothes whiter and brighter than you. Rinso white, Rinso white, Rinso new. ago, the kingfish came into possession of a rather ancient automobile, which he's now trying to sell. The used car dealers laughed. The newspapers wouldn't even accept his ad. So finally, he's fallen back on what he knows from experience is his most likely customer. Well, there you is, Andrew. Yeah, ain't it a beauty? Uh, uh, tell me, did you ever see a car like this before? No, I can't say I is. Of course, I was only 42 years old. <laughs> Uh, this car ain't old, you know. It's one of the last models that was made in 1926. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a great shape. It's had 300,000 miles of careful driving. <laughs> yeah, look at it there. Nice uh, light blue color with a yellow stripe around it. Yeah, you know, I've been looking at the thing here. Just what make is this, Kingfish? It don't look like nothing that I've ever seen. Well, uh, I'll explain that to you, Andy. Uh, you see, over the years, this beautiful car has got to be a combination of the best features of a lot of different makes. Yeah. Well, is, is that a romantic? Oh, certainly. Where else is you going to find a car with a Stutz Bearcat motor and an Essex rear end? <laughs> well, look here, I'll tell you what you do. Why don't you hop in the car there and start the motor up there and listen to some nice running? Yeah, I'll get around over here. Uh, hey, Kingfish, there ain't no door here on the driver's side. Well, uh, there ain't supposed to be, and there's an emergency exit. <laughs> By order of the fire department. The other three doors don't open at all, you see. Uh, go ahead now. Sit behind the wheel there and start up, son. Uh, push the button and listen to a purr. I'll crank it at the same time you push that. Go ahead. Yeah. Henry, uh, 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 how'd you like the sound of that stuck back at engine under the hood there? You know what? It sounds like the bear's trying to claw its way out to me. <laughs> Tell me this. How come it stalled like that? Oh, ain't nothing serious, and the most likely they gasoline. One of them octanes must jammed in the transmission there, you know. <laughs> now, I don't know about this car. I like them new ones with the hydroerratic drive on them. <laughs> i tell you what, though. Uh, I might consider the thing if the price was right. How much you want for it? Well, Andrew, the best price is $20, but if you want the extras, like the motor and the wheels, it'll run you up there. <laughs> well, that stuff be $400. $400? Kingfish, I ain't interested in the car. You ain't? No, definitely not. I don't want no part of that car, and don't ever mention it to me again, neither. That's right, Andrew. Keep an open mind on it there. <laughs> uh, tell you, sleep over the thing overnight. We'll recuss it again tomorrow. Oh, all right. Uh, where are you going now, Kingfish? Well, let's see what time it is. Uh, Six o'clock, uh... I got to take uh, Sapphire to some dance tonight. Mm -hmm. I think I'll step on into large hall here and take a little catnap. You know, I was a little tired, Andy. left the lights on. Wait a minute. That light's coming from the other side. Must be the northern lights. Hmm, <laughs> maybe that's the Aurora Boric Acid coming in. <laughs> oh, oh, let me look at my watch here and see what time it is. Holy smokes, it's five o'clock in the morning. Why is I? I gotta get home. I gotta take Sapphire to a dance eight hours ago. <laughs> oh, I'm late. What'll I do? Now, let's see. Wait a minute, that's funny. My car ain't in front of the lodge hall here where I left it. I wonder who... Holy smokes, it's way down the end of the block. Who in the world has been using my car? Well, I can't worry about it now. I got to get home and get there quick. Oh, me. <laughs> well, I'll get on in the house here. Good. Ain't no lights on. Thank goodness Sapphire's still asleep. I gotta be careful. 
This is like going into a cage of wild bears. <laughs> is that you, Josh Davis? Oh, oh, the old grizzly's awake. <laughs> Good morning, sweetheart. Uh, <laughs> I thought I'd hit the ball early this morning. Uh, got dressed, uh, made my bed up and everything. Just leaving the house. Don't you give me that. Why you been all night? Well, now, look here, honey. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. I will believe you, Joyce. I tell you, you won't believe me. I will believe you. All right, I dozed off at the large hall and didn't wake up till now. I don't believe you. <laughs> well, but that's the truth, honey. I was there for 11 hours. It was one of the deepest doses I ever had. <laughs> Lucky I had three cups of coffee before I went under, I'd still be going. Not only that, George Stevens, but you were supposed to take me to a dance last night. Yeah, I know. I had to go to the thing unescorted, and nobody danced with me. It was your place to be there. Well, that wouldn't have done no good. I can't force nobody to dance with you. <laughs> yeah, I have tried, tried a lot of times there. Made a lot of enemies that way. Say, there's something I want to ask you. By any chance, did you come over to Large Hall and use my car to go to that dam? George, you must be out of your head. I wouldn't go near that old car. Well, that's saying somebody moved my car. I parked in front of the Large Hall this morning, and I found it a block away from there where I parked it. Listen, I ain't interested in your old car. And what's more, you certainly got your nerve coming home at this hour and expecting me to believe a trumped-up story like that. What do you think I am, no how? <laughs> Listen, if I told you, we'd only start another argument. <laughs> Talk to you no more. I'm going in the bedroom, coming in here with a crazy story like that. You are the fine way. All I does is ask for a little understanding, and I don't get it. I tell you one thing, Sapphire. It'll be a dark day before I ask you for anything again. That suits me fine, you big bum. <laughs> Whoever made up that expression about a man's better half ought to get a load of her. <laughs> Well, I ain't gonna be able to go back to sleep now. I'll just sit up here in the front room. I'll turn on the radio. Oh, me. Life really got its problems already. Those are the current developments on the European front up to this moment. Now for the local scene. In a daring pre dawn robbery, a lone gunman burglarized the Robbins Jewelry Store on Lenox Avenue. A loss of over $2,000 in jewels was reported. The only clue to the identification of the gunman is that he made his getaway in a light blue sedan with a yellow stripe around it. <laughs> and the door on the driver's side was missing. Oh, me. What did he say? The police have started a citywide hunt. In Washington, the Congress... Holy smoke. So that's what's happened to my car. Oh, me. It was used in a robbery. They can't send this on me. They could... They, uh... Oh, can they? <laughs> oh, me. Sapphire, I gotta talk to you. I need your help. You need my help. You certainly got a sharp memory. Only a one minute ago, you said it would be a dog day before you ever asked me for anything again. Honey, the eclipse is here. I... <laughs> Happy little watch days come. For a watch that's brighter and brighter than new. Rinse so watches, rinse so new. Rinse so white. Whiter than new. Rinse so white. Brighter than new. Rinse so white. Rinse so bright. Rinse so new. Rinse so new. It's an amazing fact. 1950 Rinse so with Solium gets white clothes whiter, washable colors brighter than new. Rinse so new. Even on rainy days, Rinse so puts sunshine in your wash. No other soap can make your wash so white, so bright, because no other soap contains the scientific sunlight ingredient, Solium. 1950 Rinso gets out more dirt. Yes, gets out more dirt than any other type of wash day product. Get Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to your hands. Get Rinso today. See your wash become whiter, brighter than new. Rinso white, Rinso bright, Rinso new. Come in, Henry. Hello, King. Say, what's wrong with you? I never see you look so worried. Well, I is, Henry, but uh, I just can't tell you about it. Oh, Kingfish, you can confide in me. After all, I have been your intricate friend for years. <laughs> uh, tell me this. Did you read in the paper about the jewelry store robbery? Yes, I did. Well, Henry, my car was used in that robbery. The police is looking for the car. 
The thing is, I was asleep in the lodge hall doing the robbery. So I ain't got no alibi to prove that I didn't pull the job. Well, ain't there nobody that could testify that you were sleeping there? Nobody feed me. I ain't got no witness. Yes, you was in a bit of a jam. On top of having no alibi, your absence at the dance last night had everybody talking. It did, huh? Oh, yes. Sapphire tried to cover it up by saying you was working. That brought down the house. <laughs> Henry, this thing is closing in on me. What must I do? Well, the only way that they can link you with the crime is through the car. The obvious thing is to dispose of the car. Yeah, that's right. Dispose of the car. Mm-hmm. And I think I know just the disposal unit to use. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get rid of that car fast, because they could convict me of the jewelry store robbery on circumstantial evidence yeah. alone. Yes, they could. Oh, I was in a mess, Henry. Yes, I'd say you were, Kingfish. Now, listen, Henry... You don't by no chance think that I committed the jewelry so robbery, though, do you? Oh, no, Kingfish. I've known you for a long time. I know your habits and your character. You would never commit any such crime. Thanks, Henry. That make me feel better. By the way, uh, when the heat is off, I hope you let me have first crack at that jewelry. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Come in, Brother Andrew. Hey, Kingsbridge, you done left a message up at my place for me to come over here. What you want to see me about? Well, Andy, old pal. Hold it. Hold it right there. <laughs> Whatever it is, I don't want to hear about it. Yeah, well, what? what's the matter, then? Listen, I don't want to hear nothing that starts out with Andy, old pal. I can never afford it. <laughs> oh, no, Andy. I asked you to come over here to do you a favor. Oh, what's that? And I done reconsidered about that car of mine. I don't care what you has done. I ain't paying no $400 for that junkie. Well, now, that's what I just getting at, Andrew. I has done shared the price a little. If you act fair, you can have the thing for $2. $2. <laughs> well, I don't know, Kingfish. You see... Uh, would I... you take the car if I give you $2? <laughs> well, tell you the truth, Kingfish. Would you take the car if I give you $400? Listen, Kingfish, the thing I want to know is why is you so anxious to get rid of this car all of a sudden? Well, then, uh, I can see that you ain't heard about the economic conditions of the country. What do you mean by that, now? Well, you remember last year how the automobile business went from a seller's market to a buyer's market? Mm, yeah, I heard something about that. Well, yesterday, the thing took a turn for the worse. Yeah. It's now what they call a giver's market. That's what <laughs> You mean to say, Kingfish, you want to give me the car for nothing? Yeah, and, uh, I know when I was licked, boy, you really got me over a barrel. Yeah, you really sensed the trend of the times, you know it? I did. Oh, y'all still playing dumb on me, huh? <laughs> you was a slicky, all right. <laughs> I know when I was beat, Andy. Uh, look here, I got the contract all filled out here. I done already signed my name on it. Right there where it says victim. See that? There's my name right there. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, I guess I was pretty smart, all right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, then, uh, yeah. Take the pen and put your John Hancock right there, right on them dots, right on top of them. Okay, Kingfish. Hey, look here. I just noticed them. You done dated this thing wrong. This is dated last Wednesday. Well, yes, then, uh, now, I had to make the thing retroactive so that you owned the car as of last Wednesday, you see. You see, this is Sunday, and Sunday's always been illegal business for everybody except delicatessen stores, you know, something like that. <laughs> Sign right there, and right, right on them dots, right on yeah, top well, of them. all right, all right. Put your uh, full name there, there. There you is. Andrew Hogg Brown. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, Andrew. You are now a full-fledged retroactive car owner with no kickback. Yeah. You know, Kingfish, for a minute there, I think you were trying to chip me. But like you say, I was too smart for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hi, Amos. Come in. Well, oh, hello there, boy. Say, Kingfish, I was just talking to Henry Van Porter. That was terrible, your car being used in that hold-up last night. Uh, what was that? Uh, tough rig about your car there, Andy. And if there's any way I can help you in your trouble, just call on me. See you later, Andy. Hey, Kingfish, you sit right where you are. You ain't going no place. Yeah, well, now, wait a minute. Let go of my neck. You sit back down there. Oh, down, fellas, yeah. now, take it easy. Kingfish, I'm going to beat you to a pulp. Then I'm going to beat up the pulp. <laughs> You wouldn't hit a man who weighed 130 pounds and was shorter than you would, would you? Yeah, I'd enjoy hitting a man shorter than I am. All right, then you and Amos fight. I'm going to get out here. Yeah, come here, come here. Come back here. Listen, Kingfish, look at here. Oh, listen, boy, look here. There ain't no time to fight. Uh, whoever owns that car ought to go to the police and explain the thing. Yeah, well, why don't you take his advice, Andy? Amos is trying to help you. Now, listen here, Kingfish. Andy, believe me, you is the owner of the car. Hey, is that right, Andy? I don't know, Amos. I just signed a radioactive contract. <laughs> put my John Hamhock on it and everything else. Well, all I know is, boy, is that whoever owns that car better go to the police and get the thing straightened out or there's going to be real trouble. So long, fellas. Hmm. That Amos. 
go to the police. Why do he always want to do things in a roundabout way, as me that? Kingfish, now, about me being revolved in this thing. Now, don't try to back out of it, Andy. You was already signed the contract. On top of that, you was revolved in another way. You remember about two weeks ago, you was with me when I bought them seat covers for the car? Yeah, well, what about it? Well, you saw me buy the material, didn't you? Yeah. There you were. You were the material witness. <laughs> Listen, Kingfish. Oh, not only that, but you was with me when I bought the horn for the car, so you was a accessory, too. <laughs> and Andy, you was in this thing a half a dozen different ways. Yeah. You know, Kingfish, I can get in more trouble doing nothing than anybody I know. <laughs> well, don't worry, Andy, old pal. I'm going to stand by in your time of need. That's the stuff. Now you're talking. What can I do to get out of this mess? Well, Andy, i kind of been mulling over the thing for a while. I've been talking here. I think I done mulled myself up angle here. Good. Well, yeah, if the police is looking for a light blue car, why don't we paint the thing some other color? Yeah, yeah, you got something there, kid. Yeah. Then the police can never catch up with us. What color do you think we ought to paint it? Well, we don't want to paint it no color that's going to attract attention. No. We want to use something that ain't conspicuous, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, we'll paint it that dark red color that's, uh, uh, what they call it? Oh, that's a great color. It's called macaroon. Yeah, let's... <laughs> He showed on a nice paint job on that car. Look at that. Mm. You don't look bad standing there at the curb, do it? No, no, that's a nice shade of macaroon, all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the police ain't never going to come after us now, is they? Oh, no, they're looking for a blue car, you see. Uh, we got a red one there. We is in the clear, all right. Oh, yeah. We... Holy mackerel. Well, what's the matter, Anna? Look who's riding down the street here on one of them new two-seater tandem bicycles. Hmm. Shorty the barber. Now I have seen everything. Well, hello there, Shorty. Well, I'll be doggone if it is. Imagine, I never expected to see. I'll be, 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 I'll Shorty, that uh, tandem bicycle you got there, that is really something. Oh, to... yeah, yeah. Me, me and my gal has been having nice rides here, whizzing around calling for everything. Oh, by the way, fellas, I'd like you to meet my gal. Uh, for me to be able to do this. It gives me great pleasure to tell you uh, how good I will. Wait a Yeah, yeah, yeah. You must have uh, lost her off of there someplace, Shorty. Yeah, well, that's life. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, didn't this car of yours used to be light blue? How come you painted it? Well, now, look, Shorty. Keep your big mouth closed about this, but somebody used this car in the jewelry store robbery. Is that car came for That's right. Well, well, then, the you fellas is in awful trouble. Well, what you mean, Shorty? Well, now, this is a strange thing, fellas, but... The janitor of the Lennon Farm apartment, and uh, well, he was up in my barber shop this morning. He, he was telling me that a woman that lives in apartment 622 in that building, she, she sees the robbery. You mean that a woman in apartment 622 sees the robbery, Shorty? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, it seems that she managed to catch the last three numbers of the license plate, and she decided to turn the information over to the police the first thing tomorrow morning. And you know what that means, Andrew? Yeah, I hope I get outside cell, that's all. <laughs> Shorty, tell me this. Who is this woman? Uh, you know anything about her? Well, all, all I know is that the janitor was telling me that she is always entering all kinds of contests to try, 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 trying to win prizes. And those contests trying to win... See, wait a minute. You know, Andy, if we was to get this woman out of town, why, she couldn't go to the police some more. And I think that contest stuff give us the angle we need. Yeah, if she gives the police that license of her, we're going to be in terrible trouble, you know that. Oh, what you tell you? Don't be silly. Even if they put you in jail, they, they, they couldn't keep you there. Oh, they couldn't, Shorter? No, no, you, 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 you could get a bail bond from... Uh, you, you, you could get out on a writ of habeas... Uh, you, you, you could get out on a habeas... A copy of a habeas... Want to buy a hot sauce? <laughs> I wish Amos and Andy were on television tonight because I have here 12 beautiful Christmas cards that I wish all of you could see. They're really handsome, colorful cards, each a print of a winter scene by a famous American artist. Now, you'd say the set of 12 cards is a big dollar value, but here's a surprise. You can get them all for just 25 cents at a Rinso box top. Yes, 12 cards with envelopes for 25 cents and a Rinso box top. 
But you must hurry. There's only a limited supply. The address is Rinso Christmas Card Club, Box 30, New York 8. This offer is limited to the continental United States, Alaska, and Hawaii. Allow three weeks for delivery, but hurry. Avoid the last-minute Christmas rush. Send 25 cents and a Rinso box top to Rinso Christmas Card Club, Box 30, New York 8. Do it today. <laughs> Andy, here's the woman's apartment, 622. Her name is Miss Higgins. Yeah. Now, remember, the whole thing is to get her out of town so that she can't give the cops our license number. Yeah, we're going to use that contest angle on her, huh? Yeah, that's it. Everybody in town has done entered that crystal crunchy contest. Yeah. And if she crazy about contest, she certainly ought to be in that one. I'll ring the bell, you know. Okay. Yeah, now, don't forget, I, the head of the command, you as the chief contest judge. <laughs> How do you do? Uh, madam, allow me to congratulate you. I is here to tell you that you is the winner of the Crystal Crunchy Contest. Oh, you mean that I won the contest? Well, won't you come in? Well, thank you, thank you. Uh, now let's introduce ourselves. I is Mr. Crystal, president of the outfit. And our vice president, Mr. Crunchy, couldn't make it today, but uh, uh, this gentleman here is the judge of the Limerick Contest, the famous poet Henry Wadsworth Brown. A real poet? Oh, how charming. I've always wanted to be a real poet. Mm, likewise. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He is one of the top men in the racket. Yeah, he wrote some great poetry. Under the Village Smithy, Little Bo Peep, and all that stuff. Uh, say something to the lady in poetry, Wadsworth. Uh, uh, roses is red, violets is blue. I is happy to meet up with you. <laughs> Jim, he's a genius. Oh, like tell me, I'm so excited about winning the contest. Which one of my limericks won it? Uh, which one you say? Yes, I sent him three. Uh, so, well, I tell you, miss, all three of them won. You won win, plays and show, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. Uh, you won the contest right across the board. Yeah. Oh, this is so exciting, winning the contest. Mm -hmm. Now, when do I get the ten thousand dollars? Well, we brought the we brought the we we brought. Uh, well, you see, that is uh. Uh, $10,000, uh... Well, don't stand there, Wadsworth. Say something. Uh, roses is red. Uh, uh, excuse me for protruding this, but you said something about the uh, 10... It said in the paper the first prize was $10,000. Now, well, miss, uh, I guess you read the rules of the contest, but you ain't read them careful enough. You said the first prize was $10,000 or a trip to Boston. Now, you was done one to all part of the contest. <laughs> but I don't want to go to both. Would you care to try for Cincinnati? I don't want to go no place. I just want to get my money. Well, now, look here, miss. Uh, don't be a sore winner. Now, here's your ticket to Boston. The train leaves at 9.15, and you'll have to hurry. Well, I guess I ought to get something out of this contest, and I do have some friends I could stay with. Well, here's the ticket. Hope you have a nice trip. Oh, yeah, this is the best time to see Boston right now, right away. Well, I'll get packed now, but I wish I wasn't leaving till tomorrow morning. I was going someplace with my sister in the morning. Your sister? Yes, yeah, she saw Robin. and she's going to the police station and give them the license number. <laughs> Give me back that ticket, lady. Uh, Wadsworth, you better take another look at them limericks, yeah. you know. So long, lady. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Roses is red, violets is blue. The thing didn't work, and I think we are through. Yeah. Andy, when the police gets our license number tomorrow morning, we're really going to be in trouble. Oh, yeah, I was really getting scared, Kingsley. Hey, look who coming to the drugstore there. Yeah, he got a briefcase under his arm. Uh, yeah, the Calhoun, the politician. Come on out here, Jeff. Hello there, boys. I ain't seen you in a long time. <laughs> hey, Calhoun, we is in trouble. Uh, could we retain you as a lawyer to defend us? I'm sorry, I'm moving right along. We need your help. Sorry, I'm moving right along. We got $10 in cash. I just come to a full stop. <laughs> Listen, here's the thing, Mr. Calhoun. The car we got was using that big jewelry store robbery, and the police got your license number. Well, the thing for you to do is to switch license plates. Oh, yeah, yeah. You mean switch the front one to the back and the back one to the front? 
kingfish eyes here to lame brain, but this friend here of yours has got a compound fracture. <laughs> yeah, uh, look, Andy, Calhoun has got a good idea there. Look here, I just remembered. Right after this last New Year's Day, one of the large brothers went to Florida and left his car in my customary. Mm-hmm. He's in the lot in the back of the large hall there. Been sitting there since New Year's Day. Yeah. That we can take our place off, throw him away, and put his place on our car. Oh, yeah, they'll never catch us that way. Oh, this is big, Calhoun, but one thing. If the police do catch us, if you got any experience in defending these kind of cases? Experience? When one of my biggest cases, I defended a fellow that shot a man. Yeah, well, what happened with the thing? Nothing to it. I asked for a short trial, made a short speech to the jury, and asked the judge for a short sentence. Well, how did your client come out? On a long rope. <laughs> well, Kingfish, we sure got out of that mess all right. Yeah, Andy, with them license plates from that other car in here, we ain't got nothing to worry about now. Yeah, I'm breathing a lot easier now. Yeah, yeah. And you know something? My car never runs better than had the motor tuned up and everything. Wait a minute. Your car? Kingfish, ain't you got the future tense messed up with the past popsicle or something? What do you mean, Anna? Well, after all, Kingfish, I done signed a contract saying you give me this thing. And look, I done made many uh, me, uh, me, uh, meanings to explain this to you. That that contract was on the basis of a quick-term option, and your franchise done first five. You ain't got no more rent to this thing, huh? Uh, wait a minute here. This is the dirtiest trick you done ever pulled Well, on you were through with your car. It belongs uh, to me. Oh, wait a minute. I don't never want to have nothing to do with you again. Stop this car and let me get out of here. Well, all right. If that's the way you feel about it, it's all right with me. I'll stop the car. All right. Now, get out of here. So long, you big bum. I never want to speak to you again. Yeah, go ahead. That boy sure is a store here. Ain't no sense in trying to be nice to nobody. That's the way I figure it. Oh, oh, what is this? What is this to here? Oh. All right, buddy, get your hands up there. Don't find anything funny. Well, now, wait a minute, officer. You, you, you got the wrong man. I didn't have nothing to do with that jewelry store robbery. <laughs> Jewelry store? We cleared up that case this morning. Well, then you don't, you won't be needing me then, huh? Oh, yes, we will. Those license plates identify you as the man who held up the United States Post Office last New Year's Day. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> You know, Andy, my wife says there's one thing all women agree on. Mm, yeah, well, I suppose I am kind of good looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what she meant was that they all agree about Rinso. More women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. Rinso gets white clothes finer than new, washable colors brighter than new, because only Rinso contains sodium. Rinso is great for dishes, too. Rinso makes the hardest part of dishwashing easier. Pots and pans positively shine. Get the economical giant size rinse right away. Stay tuned for the Edgar Berg and Charlie McCarthy program, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Good night, folks. See you next Sunday. White Point, a skin cleaner, gives you longer all over protection after your daily bath. Remember, there's not just one or two, but 13 areas of the skin where doctors have found B.O. Life Boy protects you all over. Gives you top 24-hour security. Get Life Boy right away. Be sure and listen to the Amos and Andy Show at the same time next Sunday. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.